Welcome to Artec. Today we're going to be talking about the Garmin Core System, our single screen solution for easy monitoring control within your small RV. So the Garmin Core System is a single screen control and monitoring system that allows you to control and monitor all vital systems within the vehicle as well as giving you digital switching capabilities for any analog control. Today we're going to be going through an overview of all of the products mainly because there's not a huge amount of information out there as to what the system can do, but uh, what specifically the system entails uh, component-wise. Uh, some of the components you you would have seen before, you know, such as off-the-shelf Garmin solutions for navigation in terms of some of their screens they offer, and some of the components you might not have, have seen before, including some of their digital switching modules and, and CAN bus uh, sort of backbones and, and sort of bus connections. So speaking first of all to the Connect50 V2, it's going to be the core digital switching device in the core system. That's going to look something like this. So specifically with the Connect50 V2, you've got 20 outputs, seven inputs, and then two different CAN channels, one being standard CAN that we're using for RVC, and another one is an RS-485 protocol that we're not using at the moment, but it sort of allows for some additional capability in the future. So here, the Connect50, you can see we've got selector arrows on the face of it, so if you need to manually turn something on and off during testing or, or whatnot, you can use these to select. We've got a reset button and then the manual on and off switch right here. You'll see that we've got X1 and X2. These are gonna be your Molex connectors that go in to allow all of your inputs and outputs and CAN channels to be able to communicate with the outside world. We're also providing a Wago Quick Connect system that would connect up to both uh, the X1 and X2 module. And then we've got a, our two quarter inch uh, tabs being the positive and the negative on the left and right. On the top, you'll see one connector, which is a NEMA connector. So this is how we're gonna connect up to the rest of the system via the NEMA backbone. You've got four screw mounting points as well, two at the bottom and two at the top. Got a hundred amp capacity and each one of those output channels has a 10 amp limit on that. So we just spoke about the Connect50 being a digital switching unit. It has inputs and outputs. Each one of those outputs is rated to 10 amps. So if you need more than 10 amps, then we need to use an external relay to control that device. One of those devices dedicated in the IO is going to be a front output for your light bar or lighting array at the front of your vehicle. We've allocated a 30 amp relay for this because it's not uncommon to run several individual lights or run a large capacity light bar. For this, we're using one of these 30 amp relays it's DIN compatible, so it'll snap onto your DIN rail with the rest of your Garmin connections. And that's triggered by a simple output on the Garmin Connect 50. You'll see that there's four terminals on top. It's got a clear plastic coating. Each one of these are labeled as well. So zero and one, which are going to be uh, one is there and zero is there. Zero is gonna be your positive trigger wire and your one is going to be your negative connected up to a ground. And then you've got four and six on the other side and you can see there's in embedded print on the top of these. And so we've got four and six and this is gonna be your input and output with this relay. One of the other scenarios that you'll need a relay for is for Starlink. Starlink can both be AC or DC depending on if you've done the DC conversion. With a Starlink relay, the one that we provide is a simple coil fed unit that has a normally open and normally closed connection point. It also has the common where you'll feed in that power. We're going to use that common and normally open port to control a single outlet that you can plug in your Starlink. This is what allows you to trigger the relay. You'll also see a uh, normally open, normally closed and a common with 14 being your normally open, 11 being your common and 12 being your normally closed. And so that's where you'll connect up for the system. It also has a removable relay so that in the event that this gets damaged, you can remove that and replace it. And then it also has a removable LED light, which can be used to indicate whether the relay is on or off. And these are both removable as well. If you end up going with a Starlink that is DC powered, then if it's under 10 amps, don't have to use the relay. If you want to use the relay, it will give an increased capacity, say for snow melting features. So a lot of people think that because we've got a digital switching interface that everything has to be done via the tablet. And that's not true. So for the lighting control zones, we have a, a way to basically take one input and turn it into six inputs based on resistance so that it can sense different zones of switching. And we do that via uh, this resistor pack harness. 
So on one side, you're gonna see that there's a single input into the Connect 50. And on the other side, we have six individual cables that you can connect switches up to. It then has a resistor pack in the middle. And the resistor pack is 68 ohm resistors in series. And that means that the Garmin Connect 50 is looking for an increase in resistance based on each one of these lines to determine the zone that it's gonna control. This is a way for us to take one input into the Garmin side of things and allow for six independent zone control. So in the core system that we offer, we standardize it at a seven inch. So this is the serve display. Uh, this is the base seven inch model that comes in the Garmin core system. While the serve has two markings for orientation, it needs to be mounted in a horizontal position. This is because this aligns with the graphics file. And so the system can be expanded to multiple screens and you can have different types of screens within the system, but this is sort of the base where everything sort of lives from. And this is where a lot of your system updates will be performed as well. It also gives you the ability to sort of go through settings and whatnot. This right here doesn't have a decorative cover to it, but you can see that there is orientation marks underneath. So you'll see the top there and on the side here. It's also got four screw mounting points so that you can attach it to the wall. You'll also see the ambient light sensor for automatic light adjustment of the screen or brightness adjustment of the screen. It comes with a decorative bezel as well that snaps into place uh, on here and so that's what gives it the finished look in terms of uh, when it's actually installed you know you can remove this obviously to uh, to gain access to the full screws so that you can remove the screen on the bottom you'll notice that there's three connectors we've got a network uh, connector so this is uh, what you would use for uh, ethernet connectivity on the left hand side so right here We've got a mini fit connector for the CAN portion of this, and we also provide a mini fit to NEMA adapter uh, as part of the core system. And then you've got your power cable. And so that's gonna have an ignition, a power and a ground, and the ignition and the power get tied in the same uh, in the core system. On the back, you'll just see some markings so that you can sort of orientate yourself with those power CAN and network connections and some basic disclaimers. So the power cable that comes with the serve display is going to be this orange, red and black three pin connector. The orange is going to be ignition and the power and ground are going to be the red and black. As mentioned before, you're going to tie the power and the ignition together and then the ground just gets grounded independently. In terms of other screen options, then you've got uh, the VO screens, which come in an eight and a 10 inch option and these are magnetically removable. And so you'll see on the back here, you've got uh, some pins, which is where the charging and data goes through, but then you'll see this kind of bezel around here, which is uh, has magnets built into the system. And so this just snaps into either a wall mount or a suction cup up the front or whatnot. These are really popular because they are mobile. So maybe you have a fixed display in the center of your rig, and then you have a single VO or several VOs uh, throughout the rest of the rig, but you can pick and choose where they go and you can move them around. That's really key for say, if you've got a single screen and you wanna use it while you're in the bedroom to control lighting or heating or cooling or anything like that, then you can have that there. And then during uh, the day when you're traveling, you can take that screen out of the bedroom, bring it up front, use it as a navigational device. When you get to camp, you can pull it out of the, the front, you can take it outside, you can use it to control all of your scene lighting. And then you can also use it to control any of your audio uh, needs from it as well remotely. The other alternative is using a tread display. Treads are really popular for the overlanding community. They've got some additional features that the VO doesn't. The only problem with the tread displays at the moment is that they don't have an elegant wall mount solution. So they're great for up front in the cab and if you want to pull that off the wall and use it external to the vehicle while you're at camp for say exterior lighting control or audio control, but it's not a great option if you're going to use that as an interior option, say around in different bedrooms where you need a wall mount option, then I would go with the VO screens. So now we've spoken about some different screen options and the main digital switching module in the system, then there's obviously the connectivity part. So moving on to the NEMA backbone, the nice thing about these is you've got screw terminals on both ends. And so this is expandable, you know, if you had a larger system, uh, the other key part about that is that it doesn't have terminators built in, so we get to add those. So for every CAN system, you need termination, you need resistance in it for it to read appropriately. If you're familiar with 
the VECAN system on the Victron side, then you'll know that we terminate both ends on that and this CAN system is no different. These are the appropriate terminators for the NEMA backbone. There's a male and a female version correlating to either side of the NEMA backbone. You'll notice that there's a small indent on either one, either a valley or a notch, and that correlates to the appropriate uh, connection on the backbone. So if you notice, it'll only slot in in one spot and then can be tightened together. Pretty easy, it comes with uh, two screw mounting points, so these just get uh, added into the system, typically, you know, closest to where all the devices are. You know, it's nice to have all of your, your sort of NEMA connections uh, nice and close to each other. In the kit, we provide three NEMA drop cables. NEMA drop cables are a great way for you to gain access to items in the system that are far away from the base install. And that's pretty common for the serve display because your serve display probably isn't going to be super close to where your distribution is. The NEMA cables provided in this kit come at six feet and then they also come in a 19 foot variant. The 19 foot variant would typically be used for your serve display so that you can mount the screen somewhere central in the vehicle. And then your shorter runs so that you can place this relatively close to other devices in the, yeah, an electrical cabinet or whatnot. There's also a mini fit to NEMA adapter and this is what's used on the serve display. So on the back of the serve, you've got a four pin, uh, you've got a four pin uh, mini fit uh, connection in there. And so this takes that from a four pin mini fit and puts it into a NEMA compatible connection as well. And that's just plug and play as well. For the RVC side, we have an RVC multi-tap and it does the same thing, you know, pretty much as the, the NEMA backbone. Basically we have a single output from the Connect50 V2 um, for the CAN side of things, CAN high and CAN low uh, coming out of that. And so this allows us to take CAN high and CAN low, apply a power and ground into this, and then multiply it into four outputs in the middle. And we have snap-in connectors for those as well. So you'll see four pin connectors on either side. These are lever connects from Wago. They just flip up and flip down. So in the middle there, you can see your four CAN quick connection points. These are gonna allow you to connect your Rixens hydronic system, Max Air fan, Victron power system, wake speed regulator, and any other RVC components in the system. In the middle here, you have additional power and ground. And reading from bottom to top, the connection points on the side is going to be ground, can low, can high, and then power. The reason that you have two connection points, one on either side, is so that you can bring in can and power and ground on one side and then feed it out to another additional unit if we were to add more of these into the system. We would pull wake speed data for more advanced wake speed integration directly onto the RVC network. So these are the snapping connectors that we uh, provide with the kit. So you'll get up to five of these in the package. It allows for the four connections on here and then obviously allows you to make uh, a mistake with one of them as well and have a backup. These will accept four conductors with RVC cabling that we also have access to. So if you need RVC cabling, then let us know and, and we can send some out. These are four conductor connectors. They accept non-stripped 18 gauge cable, but that 18 gauge is specific to the RVC cable, can be purchased with the system. And these simply snap into the multi-tap, allowing for quick connections for your CAN items. So this basically works the same as an automotive tap where you're gonna strip the main sheathing off to reveal the four uh, conductors on the inside, but you're not going to strip those conductors. Those are gonna get placed straight in here. When you compress this down, it forces a sort of splice into the cable with their insulation on. And so these just plug in uh, into this section on the multi-tap and then they're quick uh, removed as well, which allows for pretty easy installation later on. It's really important to have uh, interior temperature, and so we provide uh, an interior temp sensor. This is going to be what drives the thermostat for your HVAC controls. So if you're using a Rixen system, uh, you're not gonna use their temperature sensor. And same with other thermostat controls, say with Cruise and Comfort or a rooftop AC that we have integrated, then you're not gonna use their temp sensors for the ambient uh, air temperature. It comes with a small black housing, which has two screw points, allowing you to mount it to any surface. You can sort of hide it at a, a midpoint in the van, uh, both in height and where you want that temperature reading to be drawn from. Similarly, we also include 
an exterior grade temp sensor and this is what's going to obviously provide the temperature reading for the exterior side of things in the graphics uh, on all of the pages you'll be able to see interior and exterior temperatures this provides a mounting location to anywhere external to the vehicle this is also pretty nice for you just to keep an eye uh, on in terms of freeze conditions which will allow you just sort of know if your water tanks are going to freeze or if you've got to do any sort of anti-gelling for your diesel systems and whatnot, you can use this sort of to as an indicator for that. Thanks for listening in today, talking about Garmin's core system. I know there's not a ton of information out there, so if you have any questions, please reach out to our team.